Welcome to Talking Jazz. My guest today is Alexa Tarantino, saxophone, flute, composer, arranger, band leader, educator. We're going to listen to several of the recordings from her latest release, Clarity, that actually features Alexa as the leader, Stephen Feifke on piano, Joe Martin on bass, and Woody Royston on drums. Alexa, welcome. Thank you, Monica. I'm so happy to see you. I wish it was in person, but this is amazing. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Thanks for being here. And you know, you're in New York. You've not always been in New York. Where are you actually from? So I'm from Connecticut. That's been a nice place to be able to bounce in and out of during quarantine too. It looks like, you know, you, your schools were not too shabby that you got to go to. You have degrees from Eastman and Juilliard. Obviously is very good names to have on the resume. How, how did you get into the horns? What was your attraction? So I actually first picked up the saxophone and the piano at the same time in elementary school. West Hartford, which is the suburb that I grew up in, had a really amazing public school jazz program. So it wasn't really a private school. It wasn't like a specialty art school, but they just happened to sort of be known for their jazz education. First encountered jazz and jazz saxophone when I was in third grade and I attended high school jazz program, their, their concert. They had a big concert they'd put on every year. The story is that I was sitting there with my mom and Erica von Kleist was playing in the high school band. She was the first person I ever saw uh, like play the saxophone. I tugged on my mom's jacket and said, that's what I want to do. That's really cool. You know, and that confirms so much why music and music education in those early formative years is so important. We always get that, well, yeah, music programs, it's a luxury. That's what the kids Kids have fun. If we don't have money, we'll just get rid of it because we can't sustain it. People don't realize that when you form your preferences for what you're going to do the rest of your life is during those years. But if you don't get the opportunity to see that. So we're glad you discovered this and you got into the saxophones and flutes. So this first track that we'll listen to through, you're actually playing the alto flute on it. Through I'm playing C flute, but I play alto flute later on. It was actually meant to be a little tricky actually the way that I wrote it I wanted to stay in the lower register and I and a few people have said oh it kind of sounds like alto flute so I'm I'm glad that you that you said that playing flute most saxophonists have to do it because you're required they call it the doubling but not all of them are quite as successful because it's a different instrument and you have to spend time on it is that something you cultivated all the way through parallel I picked up woodwind doubling in high school so I started in my freshman year I, I picked picked up the clarinet and the flute because as I went through that program in school, it became apparent that if you wanted to be in the top jazz band, that band was kind of the band that would come to Lincoln Center and compete in their essentially Ellington competition. You know, you would go to various programs and submit for various awards and festivals. And so the music that they were playing was at the level that required pretty competent woodwind doublings. I started clarinet and flute playing in this, like the symphonic band, started taking private lessons as well. Let's get treated by your beautiful flute playing on this first track. This is through, and it's actually a composition of yours too. And it's the opening track of your album, Clarity on Positone, with Alexa on the flute, Stephen Feifke on piano, Joe Martin on bass, Woody Royston on the drums. Enjoy.
by Alexa Tarantino, who you also heard on the flute, and a selection from her album Clarity. And we're going to listen to some more selections from that album. Actually, that next one is another original, A Race Against Yourself, where you play alto sax. You know, that whole fast swing and super high energy reminded me a lot about the Chikoria recordings from the 60s, his early recordings. The band energy, that's right. You know, the communication between the members and like kind of the personality among all the players is I guess I, I would for this record I was really trying to write things that would highlight that the level of energy is just really great you know sometimes it's hard to go into the studio and recreate what you do on stage because you know on stage you're feeding off from the audience and and you're getting all that energy and then you go in the studio and you got headphones on and you're in your little cubby hole and have to be isolated you know often when, when when you get recordings of a band that you heard live and then you take it home and you go well that sounds so tame that wasn't what i heard on stage. yeah we had a, we had a really good time we hadn't played together for a little while because this was this was recorded towards the end of the summer that year how long had you been working with the group well rudy and joe they were on my first record for positone as well so we had been playing in quartet format for a couple of years and Steven and I have obviously you know known each other for a while and play in various formats together and it worked out really nicely that he was able to join on the recording for Clarity that personnel was able to play you know the record quite a bit through, throughout the year the energy is just great is there anything about the title a race against yourself that would be interesting to know i guess that's how i feel like a lot of the time i'm just you know i'm like that person that gives myself too many things to do in a day and i can never get them all done or i need to kind of rein it in sometimes and and give myself an amount a reasonable amount of things to get done in a day and oh trying to overcome that let's see that energy that this produces a race against yourself so this is an alexa tarantino composition she's also featured on alto sax with her group from her album clarity and stephen feifke on piano joe martin on bass and rudy royston on drum go race <laughs> Thank you. 
Tarantino composition from her latest album Clarity and we're getting several different selections today so we heard two originals and now we're gonna go to La Puerta which is not an original but a very cool cha-cha-cha slow going Luis Dimitrio is the composer and you're on alto sax it has a gorgeous melody you know I hear some Johnny Hodges touches in between when 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 you play that alto tell us a little bit about that tune and how it ended up on your recording i was first introduced to it when i was playing with arturo o'farrell and the afro latin jazz orchestra i was a member of that band for a couple of years here in new york we would play every sunday night at birdland jazz club and i was so fortunate to sit next to the legendary bobby porcelli who would play lead alto saxophone really a legend on alto he played with tito puente machito Tito Rodriguez, all of the Latin jazz legends and more. So he would play that song every week as his feature. And it was just his sound, his tone, his vibrato, everything about it. It was just beautiful. And so when I was at Juilliard one year for our jury preparations, this tune was on the repertoire list. I performed it for my jury and I just was like, I need to work this into my regular routines. It's been a really nice change from, you know, the way that I write my original music. And I think people just have loved the melody, the singing aspect of the song, and just the urge to kind of dance. How cool is that, that you got to sit next to this legend playing that song and got to soak that all in? What, what an opportunity. So here it is, La Puerta by Luis Dimitrio. This is uh, performed by Alexa Tarantino on the alto sax. It's a selection from her latest album, Clarity, on Positone, also featuring Stephen Feifke on piano, Joe Martin on bass, and Woody Royston on drums. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
that was La Puerta, a Luis Dimitrio composition, and that was a selection from the album Clarity by my guest today, Alexa Tarantino. It's really great to hear the different sounds of the alto sax from straight ahead and energy and driving and then the beautiful Johnny Hodges touch. That next one we're, we're listening to also shows a little bit your composing influences or, or listening to it. Benny goals in touch in, in terms of putting the melodies and the harmonies together and thinking about alto sax too. I, I play often with all of Nelson Jr. and all his dad's composition. So I thought there's a little Oliver Nelson in there too. I think definitely because of the like really the bluesiness of this one and the melody is somewhat natural but has little points. It goes in a little bit of an unexpected place at times. And so I definitely think those are two two composers that definitely fit that for sure that I would have gotten that from. And the cool thing about, you know, Oliver Nelson was that, I mean, he wanted to be a classical composer and he was a great film composer. And he had, so he had these incredible composition chops and tools, was not allowed to do that at the time. Doors were closed. So his outlet was for jazz. That was what he's mostly pushed, pushed into, but then also for film music, which was great. So when you write, tell us a little bit about your writing process. Writing is a little bit just between, you know, the, the doubling, keeping up all of those things. Sometimes I don't get to focus on my writing as much as I would like. What I often find is that it's just when I have a record date coming up, that's when I'm writing all the music. And so it's it's actually nice though, because it's like a little bit of a wave, you know, each year I know when my record is coming, you know, it gives me an opportunity to put something together, whether it's sort of a conceptual project, like a suite, or whether it's just these different tunes, you know, with, with different vibes I'll try to block out time and sit down and say okay I gotta write a tune oftentimes I might get just four or eight bars and have to revisit it in the next time I sit down and slowly kind of chip away is generally how it works I find that the melodies are easier you know to that come to me harmony I have a little bit of a harder time with I think probably because not a harmonic instrument per se so I'm not always in that world and so to find the right chord and the right color for what I'm thinking of takes me a little bit of time. This, this is a great tune. It's very unique. And as you said, it has some interesting different twists that are, that are unexpected and that may make it special. All right, let's give it a listen. So here's Unified Front. Anything about the title? So this song, I wrote it, the, the first four bars, I actually co-wrote with my class at Juilliard, we were in Andy Farber's composition class and we were just messing around one day with some themes. And so each of us picked a note, went up to the to the board and wrote a note down, this four bar phrase, ba -doo -da, ba -da -ba, ba -da -ba, was born, we added rhythms. And so then me being like the enthusiastic one in the group, you know, with all the guys, I was like, that's gonna be our theme song. I'm gonna write our theme song. So we put, we just had a good time with it. And so I, I finished it out. All right, so here it is. This is on the album Clarity on Positone. This is an Alexa Tarantino composition, who is also an alto saxophone on this one, and Stephen Feifke on piano, Joe Martin on bass, and Woody Royston on drums. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you. 
Alexa Tarantino composition featured on her latest album Clarity on Positone Records. We heard three Alexa tunes and one by somebody else. And this next one is also by somebody else. Person that's kind of special, I would say, because he lives in your household. <laughs> to have a pianist as a as partner and, and be able to collaborate. You know, I married a guitarist, so I have this household of two musicians too. When I'm looking around, especially with with all my female friends instrumentalists pretty much all of them ended up marrying other jazz musicians it's fascinating to me even even the younger ones that i know all getting married to jazz musicians by being immersed in this pool of musicians we end up picking another one how did you get to know steven we met actually in high school at summer jazz camp skidmore jazz institute which is an amazing summer program i just loved my time there i think we both loved our time there and steven had been in new york for a while because he went to NY. NYU. We reconnected when I started playing, subbing a little bit, and then started as the alto, one of the alto players, his big band, Stephen Feifke Big Band, which has a record coming out soon, Kinetic. So we reconnected uh, after I moved to New York and Stephen had been in New York for several years. He attended NYU. And then when I moved, I started subbing a bit in his band and then eventually started playing one of the alto chairs in the Stephen Feifke Big Band. You guys are together, you work together and you have to balance, you know, sometimes you're a side woman on his project and then he's a side man on your project. And just like us, you will have to communicate via email if, if you're just one room apart. How's the balancing working out? Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, who would have expected that we all would have been home all the time for 10 months and not traveling? with gigs. We've been really, really fortunate. We have been able to create a bit of a home studio here. And Stephen just, he did all this research into technology and everything. I really have to give him the credit in terms of like hooking it up for us to give live stream concerts on Sunday nights. And we've been able to, through those concerts where we donate 25% of proceeds to organizations that matter to us and to others in the world, we've been able to donate over $10,000 throughout the course of quarantine. We're really grateful to have developed a little bit of an online community. We put on a, an online summer jazz camp at one point. We've taken a little bit of a break recently. We sometimes we take a few weeks off here and there, but I think we've done about 39 of them, which is crazy to think we've been in quarantine for that long. And so, yes, from the beginning, we we were giving 25% of the proceeds to organizations like, you know, Black Lives Matter, certain artists, COVID relief funds. You know, I'm, I'm a strong believer that the minds of jazz musicians that are trained in improvisation and come up with solutions pretty quickly because we're used to problem solving. So this next tune is a Stephen Feifke composition. It's called Karma. I absolutely love this piece. I asked Stephen to contribute a piece to the record because, well, he's an incredible writer and also I was in the mode of trying to make sure I could write all my songs for the record. And I always value having other members of the band contribute somehow, especially because I think they know my, sometimes they know my playing maybe better than I do or tendencies and things like that. And so they can write things that will challenge me in ways 
that are different than maybe I would have written. He especially featured Rudy Royston on this. Rudy takes an awesome solo towards the end and he just sounds incredible throughout the rhythmic hit. So here we go. This is Karma, a Stephen Feifke composition from the album Clarity. This is Alexa Tarantino. What do you play on this one? Alto sax. Stephen Feifke on piano, Joe Martin on bass and Rudy Royston on drums. Here we go.
a Stephen Feifke composition from the album Clarity by Alexa Tarantino, who is also my guest today. We have time to do one more tune, one more from that album. Thank you for your silence. I think that this was a joke between Stephen and I. This was like something, just a joke that happened. I don't remember exactly how. Sort of in reference to like, you know, people that decide they want to give you a lot of advice or commentary when perhaps, you know, you didn't really ask for it. So it's like what I wish I would say in that moment, as opposed to usually what I do is politely sit there and nod my head and smile. But it was like a little bit of a sassy response. I can see that. I'm I'm sure that's not a rare coincidence that people want to guide you and, and think they have some things they should tell you that <laughs> you might already know. So many amazing mentors and teachers, but it's more like, I guess I should say, you know, if I'm carrying my saxophone on the subway and somebody's like, oh, is that a violin? Or, oh, like, I've never seen a woman play the saxophone. You know, all the, those types of comments that you're, you could do without. So now everybody clearly knows that the alto saxophone player is the band leader. Well, some of the things, you know, I, I know you're in Diva and, and many other groups have a long way and so many things to accomplish. In 20 years, what would be like your dream thing you wanted to see? be accomplished or be part of or something like that. Is there something? Well, I have a summer program that I run called Rockport Jazz Workshop. And I just, it's the highlight of my year just working with young students. I would love to maybe eventually have some type of school or a run, you know, some type of program or perhaps some type of organization that presents performances and education and is a very community centered uh, initiative. You're doing actually programs for jazz at Lincoln Center in that regard, right? Right. Currently, we're working on a virtual offering for our high school students that we usually work with on the weekends. And I've been involved with their Jazz for Young People programs and created a virtual show for them this summer when quarantine started. They've done an amazing job of pivoting to the virtual world. This reminds us, you know, how much we need those places and, you know, for anybody who can to help support them get through this time, I think it's appreciated on the audience's side, the performer side, the presenter side. Yeah, Berlin and, you know, unfortunately the jazz standard clothes, which we all loved. I think we will see a great revival once things come back together. There will be a hunger. People will just want to be together. And the live streaming and finding other outlets like this is, is really amazing. Are you going to do a few more live streams or what's what's coming up over the, next, the near future? <laughs> well, Stephen and I both have records coming out in April, I think. And so we're working towards those. I'm just going to keep going with teaching. I'm working on a new educational initiative platform with my content on it. Yeah, more performances, more live streams, just trying to do more and more. Thank you so much, Alexa, for taking time out of your busy day and sharing about your music and about your approach. It's been great to, to get to know all of that and to listen to the music. Thank you, Monica. Thanks for having me. It's been great to see you again. Of course, I wish it could have been in person and that we could play, but I, I look forward to reuniting at some point on stage. Thank you for having me. Thank you. The time will come. So in the meantime, thank you for your silence. This is an Alexa Tarantino composition from her previous release. Clarity, look out for the upcoming release, Firefly, coming up on Positone. But on this one, we have Alexa Tarantino on the saxophone, Stephen Feifke piano, Joe Martin on bass, and Woody Royston on drums. And thank you. <laughs>
Talking Jazz. My guest today was saxophonist, flutist, educator, composer, Alexa Tarantino. Tune in for Talking Jazz every Thursday at 11 a.m. and every Monday at 7 p.m. right here on WETF 105.7 FM in South Bend, Indiana or online at wetfthejazzstation.org. Also find videos of previous shows on YouTube on the Monica Hersick channel. That's M-O-N-I-K-A-H-E-R-Z-I-G. Subscribe to get the newest updates. Thank you for listening.